Assalamu alaikum, this is Dr. Hasna with Hasna's Natmi and today we are going to continue our front of the thigh series by talking about the adductor canal and the femoral artery. So let me just give you a brief overview that your thigh consists of three compartments, the front or the anterior compartment, the medial compartment and the posterior compartment. Anterior compartment of the thigh basically consists of your quadriceps femoris muscles that are extensors of your knee, so it's the extensor compartment. Posteriorly is the flexor compartment, basically causing the flexing of the knee, which is mostly occupied by the muscles called the hamstrings. And finally, the medial compartment of the thigh, which consists of a bulk of adductor muscles. Now, these adductor muscles include the adductor longus, the adductor brevis, and the huge muscle called the adductor magnus. So let's get started with our discussion of the femoral artery with the adductor's canal first. In the previous video, I already mentioned that femoral triangle was basically a triangular depression in the front of thigh in the upper one third of your thigh. The apex of the femoral triangle is continuous in the medial compartment of your thigh as the adductor's canal. So you can see in the middle third of your thigh, the femoral triangle's apex is continuous with the adductor's canal, which is an intermuscular space situated on the medial side of the middle one-third of the thigh. What are the boundaries of the adductor canal? It has three boundaries, anterolateral boundary, so it's going to be here, anterolateral boundary, the posteromedial boundary, and the medial boundary. Anterolateral boundary of the adductor canal is going to be formed by the muscle, a muscle of the front of the thigh of course. Because let's imagine we're looking at your thigh medially because the adductor canal lies medially. So the most anterolateral or anterior and lateral compartment would be formed by the vastus medialis, vastus medialis muscle which is a part of the quadriceps femoris. The posteromedial boundary is going to be formed by the adductor muscle of course because it's lying in the medial compartment so it is formed by the adductor longus above and the adductor magnus below and finally the most medial boundary is going to be formed by the sartorius muscle as the sartorius muscle it's the longest muscle which comes all the way from the anterior superior iliac spine and goes all the way medially to get attached on the tibia's medial surface so it is forming the medial boundary of the adductor canal what are the contents of the adductor canal? Well, the femoral artery and vein, as you already know, were traversing the femoral triangle. They soon enter the adductor's canal, all right? So the major content is the femoral artery, the femoral vein, and the saphenous nerve. The saphenous nerve is basically a posterior division of the femoral nerve, which was in the femoral triangle. What happens in the adductor canal in the in the femoral triangle as the arrangement of structures was that most lateral was the femoral nerve then it was the femoral artery and then it was the femoral vein by the time they reach adductor canal the order completely changes which is very important so, it, so the most middle part of this drawing is the femoral artery the femoral vein that was lying medial to the artery is going to pass posterior to the artery and come to its to lie in its lateral side in the adductor canal so, the content of the adductor canal includes the femoral artery, the femoral vein which crosses the femoral artery posteriorly to come to its lateral side and finally the saphenous nerve which crosses the femoral artery's lateral side anteriorly to come to the medial side. And other contents include the nerve to vastus medialis which lies lateral to the artery right here and some divisions of the obturator nerve. So that was all you needed to know about the adductor canal. Now let's get started with talking about the course of the femoral artery. Now this gets quite simple because you have divided the thigh into three parts and the lowermost part of the thigh consists of uh, in the medial compartment the huge muscle called the adductor magnus. There is a hiatus in this. There is a hole in the adductor magnus muscle. So the femoral artery originates as continuation of the external iliac artery above the inguinal ligament suppose. This is the external iliac artery. This continues behind at the mid inguinal point behind the inguinal ligament. This artery continues as the femoral artery and it first enters the femoral triangle. It runs downwards and medially after which it passes into the adductor canal 
and once it comes to the lower one third of the thigh, here it passes in the hiatus of the adductor magnus or the hole of the adductor magnus to go posteriorly. So, if you notice the course of femoral artery is first it lies anteriorly, then it enters the medial compartment, finally through the hiatus magnus it enters the posterior compartment of the thigh and once it passes through the hole in the adductor magnus, it becomes continuous posteriorly as the popliteal artery because the popliteal fossa begins at that point and that is the termination of femoral artery. So that was the origin course and termination of the femoral artery. What about the branches? The femoral artery in the femoral triangle gives about three superficial and three deep branches. The three superficial branches include the superficial epigastric artery, the superficial circumflex iliac artery and the superficial external pudendal artery. The deep arteries are more important because the most largest branch of the femoral artery is known as, which is deep branch, is known as the profunda femoris artery. Apart from this, there is a deep external pudendal artery and finally the muscular branches it gives off to the muscles of your th uh, entire thigh. Here the most important artery is the profunda femoris. Let's talk about the profunda femoris. The profunda of femoris basically arises from lateral side of your femoral artery and instantly goes posteriorly, all right? So the profunda femoris, once it arises from the femoral artery, suppose there is a femoral artery, the profunda femoris uh, arises laterally. Now let's imagine I am showing you the thigh in its medial view. You're viewing the thigh from the medial side. So what you'll see is that the femoral artery is going to give profunda femoris, which goes posteriorly, all right? And as it goes posteriorly, it comes across a couple of muscles of the medial compartment. We all know that the adductor longus is lying, making the floor of your femoral triangle and your femoral triangle consists of the femoral artery. So the adductor longus is going to be throughout the course. Then we have the adductor brevis and then we have the adductor magnus. The course of the profunda femoris is that it originates lateral to the femoral from as a lateral branch of the femoral artery it goes posteriorly and passes first between the adductor longus and adductor brevis then between the adductor longus and adductor magnus and it eventually pierces the adductor magnus to anastomose with the upper muscular branches of the popliteal artery so that is the origin course and termination of your profunda femoris the branches of profunda femoris include the medial circumflex femoral artery the lateral circumflex femoral artery and three perforating arteries after which itself it continues as the fourth perforating artery. Important clinicals of the femoral artery include that if you ever want to feel the pulsation of a femoral artery you have to palpate it on the mid inguinal point just against the head of femur you can actually feel the pulsations of the femoral artery. Also this is the point you use when there is massive bleeding you can compress at the mid inguinal point so the femoral artery is compressed and the bleeding can stop. Apart from this, in case of coarctation of aorta which is narrowing of the aorta, the femoral pulse will become quite weak so you can detect it by feeling the pulse of the femoral artery here. And finally, catheters can also be introduced into the femoral artery for example in procedures like heart surgeries and that's all. So that was all you needed to know about the ductal canal and femoral artery. I really hope you understood today. Don't forget to subscribe to my channel. Thank you so much for watching.